What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Tyler. We are sitting in the truck, the sandworm. Um, today's video is gonna be uh, very experimental, at least for me. Um, it might be overkill what I'm gonna try to do, um, but before we get started on that, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And um, yeah, we're gonna try something um, new for me at least very very electrical electrically experimental i think it theoretically will work um but like i said like and subscribe and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about Okay, so as you all know, these trucks do not come with a garage opener on the mirror or visor or anything like that. So I have this garage remote right here. And my goal today is since I have this eight gang aux beam is I want to make this button available to open my garage door. And I will show you guys how I plan to do that. We're gonna pop the hood. I'm gonna put the mics on so my sound's a little better. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys how I plan to do that. Um, theoretically, this should work because I can make this button momentary, which means I just push it, activate the garage, and call it good. Um, so let's go ahead and pop the hood and I'll show you guys how I plan to do this. Okay guys, so we've got the hood popped on the truck. Um, I have the garage remote that I will be using for this project. You will need you a garage remote, at least for um, the way I'm doing this. And there are actually two ways to do it. Um, I'll show you the first way. This is, I'm not gonna do it this way. Like I said, I'm not gonna do this the first way that I'm about to show you, but you can do it this way. This was probably the easier way. So I've got the cover off. We've got the flat battery here. These are the three buttons. Um, I don't have the cover, but you saw the three buttons in the cab. Um, so my garage is hooked up to this first button right here. So the easiest way to do this is to leave this powered by the battery. And um, you have these four little metal notches right here on the button. So Theoretically, you would take a switch with two wires and you would solder the two wires to one of these top ones and one of these bottom ones. And this is what would happen if I can do this one handed. So if I connect, see if I can do this on camera. If I connect the top and bottom, it closes the garage. Um, I don't know why it didn't go down. I think I have something blocking the garage. But anyways, like I said, if you connect the top and bottom, I can't do this one handy. It's closing the circuit, causing the door to open and close. Um, and to do that with a switch, you will connect the positive and ground to the top and bottom. And when you hit the switch button, it will close the circuit, which will cause the garage door to open and close. But the way I'm doing this, since my aux beam switch is powered um, by 12 volts, I have a little, a little step down voltage device. So it's gonna step my 12 volts down to three volts, which is what this battery is. Um, I'm actually going to remove this battery and I'm going to solder a positive to the positive, which is this top metal piece right here, and then solder a negative to underneath the battery. There is a metal plate and that's the negative. Um, and then I'm going to solder just a little short piece of wire connecting the top and bottom. So instead of hitting the switch and closing this circuit, this, close it, this circuit will remain closed and um, what will power 
this device is when I hit the switch in the truck, it will send power to this chip, which will then activate this circuit, if that makes sense. Um, so you can either do this as a normally open circuit or a normally closed circuit. So mine's gonna be normally closed, which means this is connected all the time and only activates with power. Um, with the battery, you would be doing it with, it has power all the time and only activates when you close the circuit. So I'm doing it with no power all the time versus this is powered all the time, if that makes sense. So anyways, theoretically, this should work. Um, but what I have to do now is solder some wire here and then take this battery out and solder wire to this. So we can actually do this inside so it's not 100 degrees out. Um, we're gonna go in my office, my little workspace and do this. But this should work. If it works, then I will have a garage button on my aux beam. And like I said before, this is like overkill, you know, maybe not very necessary, but a fun little experimental project to try and see, especially if you guys don't want one of these hanging on your visor. Um, I don't really like stuff hanging on my visor. That's just me and one less, you know, button that I have to have in the cab since I already have the eight gang switch. So we're going to go into the office, solder this, come out, plug it in and see if it works. Okay, guys, we are going to see if my phone holds here, but this is the little step down device that I got to go from 12 volts to three volts. This is the output, your yellow and red is gonna be three volts. Your red and black is going to be the 12 volt input that you're gonna use. Um, so we're gonna solder the yellow and red to the negative and positive of where this battery sits. We are going to cut this wire into a shorter piece and we are going to connect it between these two, this top and bottom metal piece right here but first we need to take the battery out so that we don't <clears throat> accidentally close the sit there and close and open the garage the whole time we're doing this this bottom plate right here underneath is that should be the negative um, so that's what we're going to solder to and uh, theoretically this should work but first I'm gonna get the hard part out of the way and solder the top and bottom pieces because that is going to be the difficult part. First step is to kind of just figure out how short we need this. And don't make fun of my soldering because I touched the metal. These negative and positive wires, yellow's negative, red's positive always. Um, so red's going to go to the top, so we're going to do um, bottom first. Actually, I'm going to try something I learned. So if you actually put some solder down, like that, <coughs> you can actually heat it up. And stick your wire in it like so and once that's yep see now that's in there so now we just got to do the positive so we're gonna put some wire up here Let that cool down, make sure it's going to hold, and we're holding. Okay, so I'm going to unplug the soldering iron. Um, so now we should be able to just plug 
these two into my switch. And theoretically, this should work now. So we're gonna go try it. Okay, so we've got it hooked up to switch five. I closed the breaker. Um, let's go test it. So I went ahead and set switch five to momentary. So if I press this, it worked, it worked, it worked, it worked, it did it, it did it, yes, okay, now I'm going to put you guys here, and I'm going to hit the button and see if anything funky happens, just so I can get it on camera and know, but it worked, well guys, there you have it, you are able to hook your garage door opener up to your ox beam switch. That is awesome. Like I said, this was all theoretical. I didn't even know if that plate at the bottom of that chip was negative. I took a chance. I just assumed because the bottom of that battery was negative, but it worked. So now my garage opens with my ox beam switch. Um, make sure you get a momentary switch so that you can just push it, activate the garage or whatever and let off. Um, but now we're going to go take that back inside. Um, we're going to unplug it, take it back inside, and put it back in its casing just so it's safe. And then I'm going to use like some 3M um, sticky tape to kind of just stick it in the hood. But it worked. Totally experimental. This is awesome. Okay. I'm stoked. But let's go wrap that. I'll show you guys the finished product where I put it and everything. And then we'll end the video there. And let me know if you guys are going to give this a shot. I know it's overkill, but let me know if you guys think it was worth it. I mean, it took me, literally took me like, if I wasn't recording or anything, it would have taken me 20 minutes to do this. Like it, it was not that hard to do. So maybe it wasn't overkill. Um, just a fun little project with the extra garage remote I had. Okay. So I zip tied the little step down transformer or whatever you want to call it there. I zip tied the garage remote right there, zip tied the wire so nothing's bouncing around so that my soldering doesn't come undone. I put in a five amp fuse for this because it uses only three volts. Um, so let's go ahead and close up the hood. We're gonna retest it, make sure it still works. So the only downside is this is not gonna work while this is off, but you know, you're going to be pulling up to your garage while you're driving so so this should turn blue because it's momentary and it worked amazing but uh that's it for this video um you can pretty much hook up your garage door to any switch that you want um you can either utilize the three volt battery or hardwire it like i just did and um yeah so got a garage door opener and it's under the hood so uh we'll see if it lasts hopefully it doesn't like short out or anything um i don't think it will just because it uses such low power um it all depends on that seven dollar step down voltage that voltage step down that i got from amazon but i'll link all this stuff below the garage remotes that i use the step down device the aux beam switch everything that I utilized to make this work, I will uh, drop it down below and let me know what you guys think. Was it, do you think it was worth it or do you think it was overkill doing all this instead of just keeping just a normal overhead switch? Cause now I don't need this. I can take this out um, and utilize my aux beam switch. So like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.